Hey guys, today's talk is going to be about acid nomenclature rules. Please make sure you write down the title of the notes. Before we discuss acids, I want you to copy down everything you see on the screen, including, yes, including the flowchart. The flowchart is your set of rules. You need to have it. Okay, students most often want to know what an acid is. You understand that we have acids in our lives and acids and bases, but chemically speaking, an acid is a covalent compound that begins with hydrogen. Unfortunately though, even though it's covalent, the electrons are not shared, they are transferred. So, there are charges involved, just like our ionic compounds. Now if you're wondering why, let's think about the position of hydrogen on the periodic table. Hydrogen is over by the alkali metals. There's a reason for this. Although hydrogen is a nonmetal, it acts as if it's a metal and can donate an electron. And so that's what happens with acids. I mean, I'm assuming you've written everything down. So let's take a look at how we go about writing the um, chemical name for a given acid. Okay. So we have the first one, HCl. First thing is that you always understand that when you see a formula of a compound, you know it's an acid because it begins with H, hydrogen. So let's take a look. We have an H here. And acids start with an H. So now we have to decide, do we have two elements or do we have three elements? Well, we have the hydrogen and the chlorine here. This is a lowercase l, not an uppercase i. And so therefore we have two elements. So the rule is that we are going to add a prefix of hydro and an ic to the ending. And this is to the ending of our anion, the chlorine. Okay. So we're going to drop the i-n-e ending of chlorine. So we are going to start with chlorine. And we drop that ending, we add the prefix hydro, we add the stem of the element name chlor, and then we add the IC ending according to the flowchart, hydrochloric acid. That's how you go about naming a binary acid. But what about all those polyatomic ions that we've been working with? What about those? Let's take a look. Here we have H2SO4. Again, we're beginning with H, so that tells us we have an acid. We have three different elements. So here we do not add the hydro prefix. Instead, we have to look at the anion ending. Do we have an ATE ending or do we have an ITE ending? So we're stuck looking this up, SO4, on our gold sheet. SO4 happens to be sulfate. So we're going to drop the ATE ending and add IC. Now for this one, it's not so simple. It does not become sulfic acid. We actually put the UR back in. So when we name this, we're going to name this Sol... Uh-oh. Sorry, guys. Hold on, okay. So we would have crossed out the eight ending, okay, so A-T-E, right? We're gonna cross that out. And normally we'd, we would just add I-C, but sulfur we have seen is kind of uh, different than the others. So we actually add U-R-I-C for this. So in total, we're going to call this sulfuric acid. Now, let's take a look at our third example for naming acids. We have H3PO3. Again, we know we have an acid because we start with H. The H, P, and the O are all three different elements, hydrogen, phosphorus, and oxygen. So we do, we do not use hydro as a prefix. Now we're stuck looking up PO3 on our gold sheet, and we see that PO3 is phosphite, so we have the ITE ending. 
This tells us that we're going to drop that ITE ending and add an OUS ending. But of course, phosphorus, just like sulfur, has given us trouble with where we cut things off. So we actually put a little bit more back into this, okay? So let's take a look here. We start with phosphite, right? We're going to we're going to cross out the ITE ending. And instead of just adding the OUS ending, we're going to put O R O U S. So this is going to be phosphorus. Acid. We'll talk more about uh, or I'll give you more examples in class, but I wanted you to have these three in your notes because these are the um, the sulfate and the phosphate, phosphite ions are the most difficult ones. The other polyatomic ions are pretty straightforward. Okay, for writing the formulas of acids, it's pretty straightforward. We simply balance the charges when we write the formula. The first thing to notice is that every single name of an acid has the word acid in it. So that tells you that you're going to be starting with hydrogen. And hydrogen is in group 1, and it has a plus 1 charge. So now it's up to us to break apart and work backwards from the name of the acid. So when we take a look here at hydrocyanic acid, we have to use the flow chart. Which type of acid compound uses hydro and ic in the name? The binary ones, correct. So that means we're looking for an IDE ending here, okay? Now this one I chose on purpose because it's an exception to the rule. It is not a two-element acid. Instead, it is a three-element acid. However, it still ends in IDE, which is what all the binary acids would end in. So we're looking up cyanide here, okay? When we look up cyanide, we see that cyanide is CN with a negative 1 charge. To balance those charges, we simply need one of each, right? So our final formula is HCN. Again, I chose a more difficult acid name here to help you with that hydro and ick on purpose because I wanted you to have the toughest one in your notes. We'll look at some of the more simple ones tomorrow in class. Okay, let's take a look at carbonic acid. This one's more straightforward. Looking at your flow chart, what type of acid ends in ICE? What ending of the polyatomic ion? Yes, the ATEs. So we're going to be looking up carbonate. Now we know because of the word acid in the name, we know we're going to start with hydrogen with a plus one charge automatically. Carbonate, when we look it up, has a CO3 minus two charge. So in order to balance that, we need another hydrogen, right? So our final formula is going to be H2CO3. This one was straightforward, not nearly as difficult as the hydrocyanic acid. Let's take a look at nitrous acid. So when we take a look at the OUS ending here, um, I didn't get I my pen, sorry. The OUS ending sends us to look for an ITE ending. So we're looking up nitrite on our gold sheet. We already know we're starting with H plus 1 because of the word acid. Nitrite is NO3 minus 1. So to balance out those charges, we only need one of each. So our final formula is H, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry guys, NO2 minus 1 is nitrite. So our final formula is HNO2. If you're wondering what happened to the H3PO4, I would have had um, another ATE ending and I wanted you to have an ITE ending in order to figure out how to break down the names. So I switched it mid-lecture. Hope that didn't confuse you too much. We will talk about this and do some problems in class tomorrow. Have a great evening.